Mindful Coach podcast. So welcome to this edition of the Mindful Coach podcast. I'm your host, Brett Hill, founder of the Mindful Coach Association, and I'm delighted to welcome to the show Dr. Larissa Ciprina. She has such a rich, rich background, and the work that she does is so powerful and important. She is a positive psychology practitioner who teaches English to immigrants and expatriates by providing them with cultural and emotional support that eases their adjustment to the new culture. And I, I just, you know, thinking about people who need help, can you imagine the anxiety and the tension and the frustration of moving to, from one country to another with has a completely different language? The, the, the need to adapt, the pressures to do that quickly and interacting with institutions and organizations in ways that matter And she's there to help that transition. She brings uh, proficiency in English, Russian, Ukrainian, and teaches communications across cultures as an interpreter and translator for government organizations and businesses. Now, get this. She has a Ph.D. in educational psychology and cultural studies from the University of Tennessee and also a master's degree in linguistics and teaching English for speakers of other languages. Wow. So welcome Welcome to the show, Larissa. It's so great to have you here. Thank you. Good morning. Well, tell us about, you know, how did you get inspired to do this work? Like what, so what was it that got you to say, I am going to go and learn this and help people? Um, I was born in the family of the interpreter. Uh, of oh, so this, is a, this is a family situation, I see. And I was born uh, in Germany, but my father was Russian, my mother was Ukrainian, and by the age of five, I lived in five countries. Oh, wow. So the interest uh, for languages and cultures really were from my very early age. And by the age of 10, I decided that I would like to be a teacher and to teach languages, and I chose English. Uh, From the very early age, I also understood the power of the word, and uh, I said, my word is my wand. So Mm. I believe that there is a wand, (laughs) magic uh, power, and the language is the one. Mm. Mm. So this came from your experience of like, moving so often and then like where's the help <laughs> am i is that right you were like how can i get help and somehow you decided i'm going to be that in the world that's a really yes. powerful story and, um, uh, i also understood very early that the language we use influences how we feel and also how it affects other people and relationships mm. so it's not just Get get the words right, but how am I coming across? What's the what what words do I use to to create rapport to connect? So there's something about connection in all the work that you're doing as well. Connection and first of all, connection with self. Mm. Well, that's a big transition. Like, what was it that got you to to begin to look? not just to the mechanics of how do I translate and how do I integrate, but to this component of self. That's a, that's a really big, you know, a really big piece that a lot of people don't ever go there. So how did, how did that come into your focus? Uh, Professional interest in cross-cultural communication also brought me to a deeper study who I am Mm -hmm. and how people consider themselves, who they are. And uh, all the components or roles, as it turned out, it's not who we are because they are changing, they are not permanent, they can be frustrating, they can be in transition. So if you put attention only one sphere of your life, and associate yourself either with work or family or role in the organization, you might might miss the 
main core who you are. And this mm -hmm. is why inner dialogue and understanding our base, not basic, uh, most innermost values that define uh, ourselves is as the most difficult but also important step in coming into power and be comfortable in any culture, in any language. Oh, wow, that's so powerful. So, so if I hear you, what you're saying is that when you connect to yourself, then you, that is what helps you um, really make a transition as challenging as moving into a new culture because then you're not so, you're connected to something bigger than the challenges you're having. Yes, so we are talking more about spirit and resilience. Mm. And resilience, it's, um, it's like a willpower. It is um, mm. what makes you move, cry, excited. Mm -hmm. It's not body, business, or what you do, but rather who you are. Hmm. And how do you get people to, to, to start to, to turn towards that? So how do you get people to just begin to look to that as a means to help them adapt to a new culture? You know, for many years, I have been teaching uh, in academia. And I was teaching teachers how to teach languages and in the English language as well. But also I was ESL uh, instructor for adults in colleges and uh, I understood that because everyone is unique and has their own purposes and their level this system when there are too many people or 35 people in the class it does not work mm -hmm. and that uh, like mass education provides with uh, maybe grammar, but not understanding mm -hmm. what they really want and how they are going to use the grammar. So seven years ago, I started my own coaching uh, services, and I call it ESL and culture coach. I call it services, and I call um, uh, people who work with me learners, and we learn mm -hmm. together. And uh, first of all, I have a, a deep uh, self-assessment to understand why they want to learn the language and also what they think about themselves as a learner or as a person or in the future, what dreams and goals they have. And um, in many cases, people already know English, English grammar or good vocabulary. Mm -hmm the lack of self-confidence and value in self as the person or for these values they have prevents them from being um, open to communication, for reaching mm -hmm. out, to participate in teamwork at um, the workplace, or, or to have a public speaking event, yeah. or stop their business. Yeah. So it's not the language itself, I understood, but the other component, it's attitude and inner dialogue, which is the first step into coming into this confidence in using so the language in public. I, that's so uh, spot on, I think, because it's like... It's, it's the same way even if you are a native English speaker, mm -hmm. if you don't, or whatever culture you're in, you know, if you don't mm -hmm. come from a place where you're connected to your yes. own, what I call, inner authority, then yes. that doesn't come through in your words. And so even though you might have a big contribution to make, people just, the, 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 the truth of your, your feeling is not coming across in your expression. And so people discount you, even though what you have is valuable. Yes. So it, it is especially true for non-native speakers, 
Mm-hmm. Then uh, the thought that their accent is very thick, or maybe they don't speak good English, or they mm-hmm. don't know the culture. Just this thought makes them frozen. In my work, it's like I would say, what is your relationship to not knowing? It's kind of like mm-hmm. when you don't know something, does that just mm-hmm. stop you? And sometimes it, it does because you just don't know what to do literally. But but then how do you begin to engage in those circumstances? It becomes a real important mm-hmm. question. I have a question for you, though, before mm-hmm. uh, you go on to that. Uh, uh, is like, how did you start to do that work yourself? Because here you are, you know, studying languages, and somehow, though, you turned to yourself and said, I, I need to really connect with who I am in order to do this work well. How did that come to you? Uh, you know, part of the positive psychology is understanding uh, what makes us eff- effective, efficient, and putting attention on what we have. Mm-hmm. And what we have is, I have myself first. Mm-hmm. And understand that, that I am enough as I am, is very important. Mm. So Mm. in positive psychology approach, we always look for what we have, what skills students, um, learners, uh, have already, what interest they have, what excites them, and then Mm. we can go to the direction what they want to achieve, rather than to dwell on their errors or uh, missing Mm -hmm. pieces we just what they want to learn and what they have now Mm -hmm. it's true because as we we get so connected to what's not working or the gaps that we forget sometimes our minds just go to oh that this missing piece you know rather Mm -hmm. than the rich resources that we have at our disposal. Yes, and everybody is talented. So on my first... I love that. Right, and the first class, uh, I have a poem, I am. It's understanding who you are and describe Mm. uh, self in uh, terms of values. And uh, Mm. they can choose first to say, uh, or choose a compliment for yourself. It is easier when it is already written and they say, oh, yes, I am loyal or I am truthful, Mm -hmm. I am genuine. They can recognize this. And then I have a bigger list, um, like who I am. Oh, my, yes. (laughs) (laughs) I I see. Look at that. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, So all of those are like, those are, that's a great list. And it's like, um. Those are what I call sometimes the absolutes, like the the essences of people, exactly. and people light up around certain ones. And so in my, in my work, I do something similar where I ask people to to find what lights them up, and you know, and what's really true about you, and really, and once you really sense into the truth of that, kind of like who are you before all the cultural layovers, before people told you you weren't good enough, who? Who are you? Who were you? Who, yes. who do you continue to be underneath it all? And when you really somatically own that, right. it changes you in a exactly. really profound way. Yeah. Yes. So, and also spiritual practices. I go to church, and um, like I believe <laughs> in uh, in one God <laughs> and yeah. one source. Uh, and uh, in many. Um, religious teachings uh, they say that it uh, um, like from the bible this love and joy and uh, faith are fr- uh, fruit of spirit mm-hmm. and they exactly these components are needed for resilience for confidence for self acceptance and uh, to see self as good enough and the world around Sub, as supporting and people who are listening to you friendly and then somatically your shoulders are straight 
you can mm-hmm. breathe nicely or brain opens um, you smile and this immediately gives an impulse to the brain to relax to produce serotonin mm-hmm. and um, it is like holistic approach to who we are and when they write their poem they say oh it's beautiful i am beautiful mm-hmm. and then you can see the posture is different right mm-hmm. and they are relaxed and, and they are put in this poem in their room and uh, decorate it and it really helps them to be in their power and i also mentioned that these qualities are always with them regardless of outside circumstances so whenever they feel fear or doubt they can always remember who they are and it immediately gives them energy mm. the book uh, power versus force uh, there is a map of consciousness and now scientifically it was proven so we are electric being and our emotions can be electrically measured and when we are we have courage it's already 200 um, units of power and then we can have a willingness to do something intent it goes up and then we do something with love it's very high but joy is the highest Hmm. So this is like a framing that you know people might have a relationship to uh, in the in the concepts of like a vibe, like raising your vibe or higher vibration. Because yes. we're talking frequency here, right? Yes. So like the notion that you know love is a vibration. It's a higher vibe than like anger or jealousy or uh, fear. You know, and that and. One of the interesting, well, this is going to get me off into a whole tangent I don't really want to go down, yeah. but it has to do with the, the how easy it is to destroy something because of the way physics works. So, for example, and, and I don't want to spend too much time on this, but like you, it can take a, a year to build a very beautiful building, and it takes uh, 10 minutes to tear it down, and because it's easy to take highly structured systems and yes. break them down than it is to create structure out of unstructured material. And in some ways, our energy systems are the same way. It's easier to stay in a lower vibe state. And that's why it's so, it, and, and the nervous system is wired that way too. So we react powerfully to fear, to threats. And, mm-hmm. um, and that's because, you know, we grew up in a, in the savanna for millions of years where those things really mattered Mm -hmm. but now we're not in that world anymore yes you know also a lot of different um courses classes movements it can be breakthrough uh, landmark it can Mm -hmm. different (laughs) leadership courses Mm -hmm. they all come to the main idea to understand who we are and to have this tool as a switch like a joy switch i also have a, a friend. joy switch yes, i want she... one of those <laughs> yes. this is joy switch.com let's <laughs> you know it was actually already uh, patented there is a person <laughs> who is joy and mm-hmm. she created movies and it is her way first mindfully understand where mm-hmm. the emotions come from Mm. And they come usually from a thought. Re- recognize them, maybe name, not maybe. It's naming them. It's taming them. When mm-hmm. we name so something, name it, name it to tame it. Right? Is that the phrase? Right. Yeah, I love that really a lot because mm. it's so powerful, particularly when you're uh, when you talk about you know who we are, and when we start to have these these thoughts about I'm not enough. These people don't like me, and mm. you, if it's so different when you're in that anxiety versus you're coming from a different place in your in in your nervous system, specifically the prefrontal cortex and executive functions, where you can say, "Oh, there's that thought about not I'm not enough." Yes. Uh, uh, there's that part of me that is worried about, you know, 
Mm -hmm. Am I coming across well? Yeah. Such a different experience. Mm -hmm. And um, many um, immigrant families mm -hmm. in the, like old times when there was uh, all English only, they did not know how to express feelings or emotions in English. So their children had problems also oh, to course, express yeah. themselves because they did not know how to do it. However, now in schools, there are uh, like a scale. How do you feel? Right? Or there is a picture smiling or sad. Mm -hmm. But when you also name, I am angry and it is red, for example, color. Mm -hmm. Or I am sad, depressed, it is blue. And then it is green when you are calm and peaceful. And then it is yellow when it is joyful. That is a creative stage. So if you mm. want to be creative, you really need to calm down your circuits. And mm. my, mindfulness. This, what is mindfulness? It's very good. <laughs> Beautiful word, but it can be maybe a pause. Mm. Right? And breathe. So we don't say to ch children, you need to be mindful. We can say... Can you just breathe? Or can you pause yeah. for a moment? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or you can stretch or move and then the mind resets. Mm -hmm. That's so okay. beautiful. Yeah. And especially when we are angry, it is so important to have this pause. Yeah. And instead of reacting to come to responding in the way that you want to achieve what you wanted. And there is a saying that one minute of impatience, or for example, uh, vice versa, one minute of patience can save you many years of regret. So true word, so true, so true. Even yeah. 15 seconds yes. can, can make all the difference, you know, yes. really can. Yes. So powerful. Uh, also, um, Dalai Lama said, uh, a smart person knows what, what to say, but the wise person knows to say it or not. So in my coaching, uh, there are three components, attitude, knowledge, and skills. And attitude starts in self-realization and who they are getting into power and what they want to achieve and believe in themselves. So I can, right? And there is a little book of local uh, scientist and writer, Pamela Sackett. And one of the ways to come into your power is, uh, to fifth way, to pay particular attention to the spoken language and the thinking process that really shape our reality. Yeah, I agree completely. Yes. And then the knowledge, not only of grammar, grammar is important uh, as a structure, and uh, English, the English grammar is much, uh, how I would say, some languages are more difficult than English. Grammar. Okay. I'll have to take your word for that. No. <laughs> I believe yeah. you. <laughs> so English is just like, bricks you put bricks and it is easy and it is also linear uh, tenses also from past to present to future versus circular or no future in african languages for example mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. six uh, cases in the russian language each word changes the ending mm -hmm. right? so knowledge of grammar is only part of it but in colleges and other English classes, this is the, on, the only thing they teach is grammar. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. So it's just but there are so place. many other things. But um, uh, a lot of times, uh, 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 the gatekeepers is standardized testing. And um, in these tests, it's culture knowledge which is checked, not the knowledge of language. 
And this is cultural component that provides the context for understanding. I see. So when, uh, especially newcomers, come here and they say, I can't understand them. I can. It's not that they don't know the language. They don't have cultural reference to the words. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's um, uh, knowledge of culture, cultural aspects of communication are the biggest uh, component of understanding, right? And the speaking with the confidence and listening with understanding. Mm, beautiful. Yes, and uh, component number three, it's practice. So practice is also ingrained in my uh, pre uh, services. And for example, this uh, coming Saturday, I uh, invite all my former and current students for English tea party to practice small talks and social connections. And it is like an act. And there will be prompts, but also it is real life situation. And to see that it's not only words, but also body language and facial expressions and um, gestures. And again, what they, how they present themselves, what they think about themselves when they say. Sure. say is this an in-person event? It's an in-person event. And, right? you're, and you're in Seattle, is that right? It's in uh, in Kirkland, and uh, there in Kirkland, is a Washington. Right? Yep. So, yeah. So for those uh, of you that don't know, Kirkland is n uh, just north of Seattle, so it's in the Seattle. It says uh, northeast, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Northeast mm -hmm. of Seattle. Very nice. Uh, lit uh, no, I cannot say little town anymore. No, it's not little anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it has its own downtown area, very beautiful. Very nice, yeah, I love it a lot. Of and uh, a lot of um, cafes with music, musicians mm -hmm. playing. Mm -hmm. So this cafe, The Art of Coffee, it's called. The owner is a person from uh, Australia. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. And they also invite local artists uh, and musicians, and there is a special room for some uh, events. Right. So well, shoot, maybe maybe I'll pop in. That's tomorrow, right? Yes. <laughs> no, yes. it's Saturday. Yes. Because <laughs> I'm I'm about an hour south of town. So <laughs> yes, right. from eleven to one, please. Called Art of Connection, right? Small talks, Art of Connection with English Tea Party. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so let me ask you then: uh, mm -hmm. What is it that, if you were to say something to people who are struggling in a way to, or, and also to people who are coaching and working with people who are struggling, um, what would be like your key, your key, you know, uh, advice to like, how, I, let me, okay, I'm going to edit this out because I'm having trouble saying this. What I want to ask you, so here's, here's the setup. Mm -hmm. What I want to ask you is, is, because I'm trying to uh, sort of wrap up a little bit here. Um, uh, so it's kind of like, what would be your key question or your key offering to people who are, and, and, and the thing I'm struggling with is like, should I be focusing this question on um, people who need the help or people who provide the help? <laughs> okay, so this is going to be for providing. All right, so here's the question. So let me ask you this. Wait, I'm going to pause. So let me ask you this. There are people out there who are probably teaching English as a second language, and they're just teaching grammar. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna, I'm want to. i trying to figure out this other component, which you bring so beautifully, which is like this part of being and connection to who you are. The people who are out there who haven't quite made that connection yet, where can they begin to work? And it might be as simple as, you know, take a course in mindfulness or take a course in positive psychology, maybe something like that, you know, whatever it is that helps. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And because I, yes, mindfulness, it's uh, inner dialogue is the first step for any activity and for profession. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And, so, uh, and yeah, yeah, uh, go ahead. mindful people usually are careful. Um, it's mm -hmm. like doctors 
who have an oath not to harm, when we are mindful about speaking, then we are, uh, understand that the word can heal or kill. Mm. If it is language professions, for example, or the interpreters, how you translate, it's very important. Like the idiom of Khrushchev um, at the United Nations organization, he said, I will show who we are, but it was translated, we will bury you. Started mm. completely different era in the whole world. Wow. Yeah, so. Well, that's powerful. I yeah. can, I've never heard that before. That's powerful. Yes. I yeah. can just see banging a shoe on the table. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Because for he the, was for those, of you, for those of you who don't know, this is an old reference mm -hmm. to uh, Khrushchev talking mm -hmm. about, to uh, Ken in response to Kennedy, I think it was. Mm -hmm. um, and he banged his shoe on the table, and the popular translation was, we will bury you. And it basically started the Cold War. Yeah, and he did not say this. It was idiomatic expression that was not correctly translated. And the correct expression was, should have been... It would be, we will show that we're better than we think. Uh, or we will, we will show what we are capable of. The I direct see. translation, I will show you who the mother of Kuzma. But if you know the mother of Kuzma, you know how powerful he is, or how, but it's not powerful for killing, it's more I for see. capable. And Khrushchev started economic policy to catch up with America economically. Mm, I see, I see. Yeah. And it was yeah. like a wow. renaissance. Yeah. So this is to your point that, you know, the words matter. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. That's Beautiful. why you need to take it very seriously and also see what biases you have because how you mm -hmm. translate, if it is a spy or it is intelligent service, mm. depending Powerful. on your perspective. So how can people connect with you and your work? I have a, a website, eslandculturecoach.net, uh, email, eslandculturecoach at gmail.com, uh, Facebook, uh, uh, language and cultural support uh, for immigrants, and my telephone, 425-327-6800. And we'll put all of that in the show notes so uh, you don't have to rewind to catch it. I, I just think it's such a gift that someone like you is able to like speak to the hearts and souls of, of, of these people in these very challenging circumstances and address not only the mechanics of getting, getting themselves adapted to a new culture, but also the interpersonal and the being aspects of it because that goes far beyond uh that's that's something that it not only changes your capacity to mm -hmm. engage in a new culture it changes everything in your life for the better and that's yes. really powerful work and that's why yes. you're on the mindful mm -hmm. coach podcast because it's really yeah. powerful so hopefully i help my learners uh, people with whom I work, organizations, to understand that there is connection between well-being and the language we use. Mm -hmm. And the language, when uh, it is translated, also can be inviting. It can be warm, where people feel that they belong, rather than punitive or threatening. Yeah, exactly so. And we certainly know we need a lot more of that invitational language these days. <laughs> uh, so so I want to thank you so much for being on the show today. I really appreciate the work you're doing, as I said. If you could leave our listeners like with one thought, what would that be? So you're powerful. Think of yourself as good enough. Use language that is inspiring, kind, and that inspires you for greater things and people around. Mm, well, I feel inspired and I'm sure our mm -hmm. listeners do too. Thank you so much, Larissa. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you.
Mindful Coach podcast is a service of the Mindful Coach Association.